Hello and good evening from me. And me. Hello. <laughs> okay, um, so as normal, we'll give it 30 seconds a minute for people to um, realise we're here, etc. Hopefully we're on the right page, a bit paranoid now, but hopefully we are. Um, we're not expecting loads and loads tonight. It's more of a useful one to keep um, on the Facebook page for people to reference later on rather than sort of lots and lots of questions and things. But obviously feel free to ask questions as we go along as you feel it's relevant or necessary. So what we thought we'd talk about tonight was standard trip trainers. Um, certainly the reason for that is it's certainly something people are looking into now and we'll give some reasons why that is in a moment. And um, I've just been on Lou's course about um, being a standard trek trainer, so that's quite interesting. Even though we're together and stuff, I still learnt stuff because I haven't seen this course before. So that was Did quite, you? I did well, learn that's something. nice to know. I'd yes. like to know what you learned. That would I'll be tell the people as we okay. go along. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one of the uh, one of the reasons for for doing this live chat is this is the start of us making a bit of an effort to. Um, give you guys something on a weekly-ish basis um, as far as live chat goes. They're all going to be casual, they're all going to be just us. You, you, If you don't already know us, you'll know that what you see is what you get and uh, we'll, we'll tell it as it is and certainly give our opinions and experiences mm. more than more than anything else. Um, and this is just week one um, and as Blaine says, we kind of thought this would be a good um, topic just to have a little 10 minute chat about because I have just run a um, train the standards check trainer workshop today. Um, spent the day with some some great uh, great AGIs. That was uh, really nice. Um, and I am rolling these um, workshops out. Um, already done a few. Got a few more planned. Um, but we thought it'd be kind of fresh in our minds. And I would like to hear what what Blaine has has kind of learnt, as well as perhaps uh, give you guys a bit of a taster of what we're discovering from the workshops. So yeah, the, the type of things that yeah. we we are hearing back from people who come to us for the workshops about what they're wanting and needing from. Um, from a, a train the standards check trainer point of view. Right, so Agents Way's first check test on Wednesday wouldn't necessarily cover things to cover that, but there's plenty of stuff on the site and this page you'll see other talks about the standards check. But you may pick up some stuff. This is all about people that want to train people standards checks rather than the standards check itself. But equally, I think that your um, your input would be fairly useful, um, Andrew from the, uh, Adrian, from the point of view that one of the things that we look at actually on the day, and one of the things that's worth kind of asking yourself if you're thinking about why you might want to offer standards check training or support, or just kind of dip your toes in, or look at look at um, kind of branching out and having another string to your bow, um, is what people like Adrian will be wanting from you. So when it comes to um, guys seeking training, so people seeking training from you, why they seeking training, what you need to be providing, what you need to be aware of yourself, um, and uh, and those skills. So that's certainly what the day has been a little bit about. We'll, yeah. we'll kind of look at that in a, in a bit of detail. Um, just looking at a few notes that we've kind of um, made during the course of the day and of course this evening when we had a little think about what we're going to talk about. Um, I guess we started off by thinking about why you might want to be a trainer, why you're thinking about um, potentially doing it. Um, and certainly the people that ha uh, have come on both today's workshops and the previous workshops, and no doubt the future workshops I do um, as well, it's very much a mixture. So people who perhaps have had um, 10, 20, even 30 years experience of already being a trainer are looking to gain a bit more um, understanding, particularly the new criteria. Um, but also to listen to other people's experiences as well. I think that's a, that's a big thing to learn from other people. And I think that we are in a kind of tide of change where we are um, recognising that each other, our peers, have a lot to share. So that's that's really nice. Um, right right um, up into the people who are literally just kind of having a little think about whether becoming a trainer is um, is something that they have the... Um, inclination, skills, desire to do. So listening a little bit more about uh, more of it, and and I think that um, even if people review their options and go away and think, you know, I'm not ready to do that yet, um, then that's not a bad thing. That's giving people that. that well, I think I think it's worth saying that certainly in the last few weeks, a lot more people have certainly approached me and Louise about becoming trainers. We know probably because of the potential changes in October. We're not going to talk about those again to this evening, but. That that's sort of giving people think, thinking, well, maybe I'll be able to do that because that's more in my comfort zone, more the stuff I know about. And being a standards check trainer is, is quite a good way to, I suppose, cut your teeth and get into it, isn't it, before mm -hmm. the changes. Um, and because training a PDI is going to be different to training a full licence holder. But 
if you do standards check training, you're going to know the criteria, you're going to know what the exams are looking for, you're going to start to learn your trade, if you like. Then when it comes to PDIs, you've just got to up it a little bit and learn some more things about what PDIs don't know that an ADI would know. So you can sort of, as I say, cut your teeth. And, and lots of people are certainly thinking about that, aren't they? And people mm -hmm. there today were certainly thinking about that. We're not going to go into the PDI side of it at all today, but that's just a reason people may be considering now and may not have done in the past. I think that um, possibly the, the main reasons why some of you out there may be thinking about dipping your toes into that kind of trader market is quite possibly you are looking at expanding your own business. You maybe already have a small franchise and you're wanting to support driving instructors within your own franchise from a standards check point of view and lesson development po um, point of view. Uh, perhaps just offering local support and you may have a, a, a nice good reputation within your local area or even your association and people are already perhaps looking at you to, um, to offer advice um, and, and your own experiences and you might just be looking to expand that. I think that's a, a nice way of getting into it. Generally just branching out, of course to improve yourself as well. Well, so um, Adrian said, um, "Can I still be an instructor as well?" Absolutely, both Blaine and I are instructors, and I would say that yeah, that is um, is a pretty vital part of our role. If, if we're sitting there critiquing other people, giving feedback, and giving them some ideas about what they can and can't do, and, and what they need to work on, it's fairly important, certainly for me, that I am doing that on a daily basis. You and need to um, try techniques. You yeah. may come across from people like us or yourself. You. You know, you self-learn, you, you self-develop ideas and all the stuff I've done at Part 3 in the past has just come from the examiner ones. Is how are we going to make this happen and just coming up with ideas. And the only way you're ever going to see if they work is by trying them out. And if you try them out with a real person, as it were, otherwise a live pupil, you can then come at it from more of an expert point of view because you've actually tried it rather than being an enthusiastic theorist. You need to actually go out and show that it works and it doesn't work maybe sometimes and, and who it works with and who it doesn't work with. And, and then you you can then advise people more and basically you get more credibility I think if you're doing learners as well if you're teaching people to teach learners then you need to be doing it at least sometimes to have that um, credibility that it, it, you, you can do it as well and it does work. Um, having said that don't get us wrong we we know some exceptionally good trainers who are out there who perhaps haven't taught learners for for a number of years um, and I'm not uh, I'm not getting away from the no, fact no, that they still so. obviously no. have an awful lot of talent to, to share but uh, for us personally we have diaries full of learners oh. so um, I would say that possibly the four main reasons why driving instructors uh, perhaps would approach you with a view to seeking some training is they they fall under four categories um, I've got them written down here because it's been a long day, so please, please bear with. So I would say the people that um, come to you for some support or for some training are people who have either previously failed, so your uh, previous failures, if you like. So those guys that have been unsuccessful on a first or possibly even a second attempt. So um, uh, so they're, they're a particular category on their own. Then we've got the conscientious first-timers. So those guys who perhaps have got a letter um, and are using those few weeks that they um, have been um, given some notice for their standards check um, date to have a really good look at what they're doing and a bit of confirmation and perhaps a bit of tweaking if it's needing, needed. Um, the planning ahead is no letter yet um, and I think that there are a lot of those guys out there. Um, I would say that now we're in almost three years into the standards check, these guys who have not had a standards check yet are... Um, uh, are quite possibly the slightly more newly qualified guys because they are beginning obviously to get through those of us that have been around for a little while um, still a few so certainly still a few but more and more as time goes on you'll see that the um, uh, planning ahead no letter yet guys are perhaps the um, slightly newer qualified and the people that have been qualified since it begun and haven't had one know it's going to happen because they're going to probably get through one in the next year or so haven't released any figures recently they've got from what we can get about a year or so to go so if you haven't had one you're probably going to have one within the next year or 18 months probably at the most and they are doing some people for the second time round. so we know they're you know cracking towards the end um, so those people are thinking well it's going to come very soon I, I better start doing something now and that's not, not necessarily a bad thing is it and the fourth category is the uh, general lesson development and the post standards check guys. So the guys who have, have those 17 criteria are looking for a bit of a debrief, not necessarily because they've failed, but because they're looking to either develop skills that they've recognised that perhaps they were falling down on or wanting to improve a grade next time or keep up the skills that perhaps they learnt because they um, have previously seen you for, for some kind of training. 
Um, and sometimes some people just they do the service check and actually for what the result is and what the examiners say that can kindle a little bit of a fire in some of some people's belly kind of and mm -hmm. just think I'm actually I'm quite interested in this now I would like to know what's this mind mapping you talk about what's this scaling you talk about what's what do you mean by clients is that coaching no. that was good old fashioned tally -wop technique um, so they, you know, they can, there's certainly people like that that just want to take it forward and use that as an experience. And I personally quite like those ones, certainly for part three, which is my expertise, because you can look at a sheet as a trainer and you get to learn to read a sheet. And I can, me and both, Luke and both do some of respective sheets and tell people what the examiner said and what they did and it's very often right, isn't it? I think ways. this comes down to if you're thinking about being a trainer, or those of you that are already trainers, thinking about um, what it is that you need to be able to offer. So people are going to approach you, um, they are looking for you to be able to obviously justify your existence and give them something that they're, that they're after. And again, just a little bit of a brainstorm about what people are wanting from you. So the skills that you need to have as a trainer are as simple as this. You need to have facts. So despite your own experiences, be very aware that if you're going to get into a training role of any kind, there has to be a certain amount of debriefing your own experiences so you're not necessarily bringing those, those in. I think experiences that are there to help others are fine, but an opinion um, um, or a particularly a negative opinion of what might have happened to yourself is not necessarily helpful for someone who is, who is seeking you. So facts... Um, of which there are numerous places of getting uh, your facts from um, and there are obviously numerous places where there are myths and rumours so just be a bit aware about um, quoting the right things. Um, myths and rumours, definitely, so you will be expected as a trainer to know the top 10 myths and rumours that people are going to come to you with and be able to quash those and put the facts with them. So the classic one about do I need to mention dual controls and what risk management really means, those have to be factual kind of answers um, because the facts are out there. Um, the facts are in, most of the facts are in the AJ one. Yeah. And that's got to be your first port of call is if you're thinking about it, have a look at that. That's the first port of call that gives you a good idea of what's, what's required. Yeah. The driver's standards do that. You will be expected to be the solution finder. So you're expected to be the one who's going to help not only them find the solutions, but, but to come up with some solutions for things that they're struggling with anyway, be it nerves, be it an, a lack of understanding, be it a particular skill that they're wanting to learn, be it a tool or technique that they're wanting to improve. For example, like scaling in my maps, it's certainly worth you getting your own knowledge and understanding of things like that up if you're looking at supporting somebody else, even if it's just so that you can recognise somebody else using them um, well and, and badly. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, sure. So recognise somebody else perhaps using scaling but not using it correctly, for example, and being able to point people in, in, in the right direction to, to get those tools and, and, and our two next workshops up. are mind mapping and scaling, mm -hmm. I can't remember which order, but yeah. I would say that it's also pretty vital for you as a trainer to be able to give accurate feedback. Now obviously this is based on fact as well, so if you're getting your facts right and you know the criteria, so you need to have a knowledge and understanding of exactly what it is that the ADI is going to be tested on themselves so that you can give that information correctly and you're reporting correctly when it comes to watching lessons, feeding back on lessons. And again, if you're going to get into training from this point of view, the more and more you're sitting on the back of the lessons, the more you will recognise where ADIs are falling down, the traps they're falling um, into, and how to critique a lesson. So I would say that it's pretty vital that as a, as a trainer, you are recognising what you are needing to do when you're observing a lesson or talking in Costa with an ADI who produces his failed test sheet, um, how you're prioritising, because that links into that obviously, so not only how you're giving the feedback, what you're feedbacking on and how you're prioritising the feedback, because depending on the criteria of the person that has come to, um, to, to seek your help and support, you could well find that you've got 20 minutes with someone before their third and final. And that's very different to somebody who perhaps is more of the conscientious first time there's no letter yet type of person. So how you're actually making sure that the information you're giving is, is correct. Um, and this is one of the things that we've been doing in the workshop <coughs> is actually um, critiquing, a, a critiquing a lesson, looking at how we prioritise what it is that we're going to be feeding back on um, and, uh, and knowing that stuff yourself. So it's. I hope it's been um, fairly useful. Absolutely. I guess this is kind yeah. of my point where I say to you where where you're at because you're not 
necessarily experienced in no, absolutely. training standards um, checks. So. And what I was interested in, because obviously I hope I know a bit about standards, I've done my own, I'm obviously married to Lou and, and she doesn't talk about much else. Um, <laughs> it's true. Not denying it. <laughs> there you go. Um, you can't see me, see her kicking me, that's why the table's moving. Um, but what I found useful was that we had a group of ten of us there today, Lou played a video, um, and stopped it after five, six minutes, etc. and said, well, what would, what would you be thinking if you were sat in the back? What would you be putting on your notepad? What would your priorities be? And it was interesting, wasn't it? Because with ten people, we had sort of ten different views most of the time. We had different things. And you, most, mm. I think most of the time we all picked up on one major thing, and then other people prioritised other things or saw things. So, for example, I won't give too much away because it's using the course, but I thought the pupil had stalled, but actually the instructor had used the dual controls and I misread that and I thought that was quite interesting. It's probably a bit easier if you're there, maybe. But I was thinking on what he should be doing now, but actually uh, all the other people in the room thought he'd used the dual controls. So mm -hmm. it's funny how we see things differently and that, that's an important thing as well. And so, yeah, sitting on lessons, things like that. If you're a member of our site, then you can watch the videos, you can watch me doing a, a mock test with Louis sitting about. You've got Ray and Gina and some others, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And then Lou... Um, debriefs them at the end so that's a really good thing to start with is to sit down and watch those videos with the SC1 in front of you and mark down what you think it would be what you think Lou's going to say at the end and then listen to the debrief and see whether you're on the right lines whether Lou's saying what you thought whether whether she isn't and that's just a quite good way of getting started I think to see I think so right and, I, and I think this kind of We'll probably kind of wrap it up a little bit because we don't want to go into too much detail because obviously we're here for you. We're, we're here to, to answer any questions that you have that's, that's more specific to you on an individual basis if it's something you're looking at. Um, but obviously to, to advertise the, the, the workshop and say you are more than welcome if you're just thinking about the possibility of getting to know that criteria a little bit more, um, not necessarily obviously for your own standards check point of view, but from looking at how you would then... Um, pass on the knowledge, understanding and, and uh, abilities that you have to somebody else and, 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 and increasing that role within your own career if you like. And we, we're not, we don't welcome. do these things for the hard sell, it's not for that, but we will put a link on underneath this in the comments so if anyone is interested have a look. Because I think they go up to July and then we stop for the summer and then we're mm -hmm. back again sort of September, October. So if you're thinking about it, it may be time to get in now before they stop for the, for the mm -hmm. summer. But, but but I'm I'm certainly really enjoying it, and it was uh, quite a benefit to have you there as well yeah. today. I think and, yeah. and see that. Um, so um, if you just merely thinking about it, and you want to just come along and and review your options and uh, see whether it's something that um, kind of floats your boat a little bit and and whets, whets your appetite to to look at uh, doing some more of, um, and perhaps even potentially going into the part three training because of course that's going to be the the overlink the mm -hmm. overlap yeah, as well absolutely. with the 17 criteria then this is probably a day for you and uh, and, and and we're there to, to kind of support you all the way through mm. um uh, particularly um hello to you guys that are watching from a, a marmalade network point of view i know that this has gone out to uh, to marmalade network um and we would just like to say that the kind of the live chats that we're going to do on a weekly basis we're going to do them on different subjects and um, we're going to do them on um different days of the week as well because we we'll appreciate that although you can watch it back sometimes it's nice to watch something live um, and uh, this has kind of been spurred on with our uh, kind of affiliation with Marmalade Network and uh, and the good guys there so um, go and uh, like the Marmalade page and uh, go and go and join us there and you'll get regular updates about what it is that we're uh, we're doing there and uh, we're also going to put a link to their site because it's um, we're kind of here because of them really so yeah, um, just so that you guys uh, are aware of that and our affiliation with with them as well yeah. um, so this is just a, a little kind of um, taster session just as we said just to kind of whet your appetite see whether it's something that you're thinking about um, doing you'd be very welcome to come and come to any of the workshops yeah. and of course to uh, welcome you to the live chats and say we'll we'll be back next week We'll put a link to that as well with, with various things. But any questions, if it's something that you're thinking about doing, if you'd like to come along to um, to a workshop, if you're already a trainer who has some queries or questions about how that fits in with what you're currently doing or um, or any specific issue, then then give us a yeah. shout. I think, just to wrap up, the thing that I found different today and I would find diff I'm going to find different when the part three changes is um, one being a different seat because as a trainer I'm going to be in the back a lot more rather than the front. And that's a different skill because you have to observe, you have to make notes, you have to remember to talk about it later and all that sort of stuff. Anyone knows me knows that I don't remember stuff. 
Um, it's just a different skill because when you're role playing, you, you're controlling that environment. And, and most part three is role playing, not all of it, but the majority of it is. Whereas when it changes, and for standards check, you, you have, don't have that control at all. So to me, the biggest culture shock, I suppose, is going to be sat in the back without control. And, and, and as a trainer, trying to then control it, when to pull them over and talk to the ADR, PDR, whichever you're doing, and that type of thing. So that was the thing I picked up today, is how different it's going to be. So if you are a trainer like me, been doing it a while, it's worth considering. And this workshop, the workshop Lou said about the trainer workshop, is predominantly standards check. But there certainly will be elements you would be able to take over to the new part. And when the part three is definitely going, definitely, definitely going to happen, then we will obviously be rolling out lots of stuff for that. We're just hanging back at the moment because there's still little doubts. We know people are complaining to the DBSA and all this sort of stuff. And we're not going to release a load of stuff when it could potentially be pulled. We don't think it will be, but you don't know, do you? Until it's signed, sealed, and the date is can't be changed because there are some legislation changes required, then, then we won't be releasing stuff. But also, as a trainer, it'd be a bit daft not to start going towards that angle and thinking about it and adapting and what type of thing. And a few of the guys today were trainers of non-standing, weren't mm -hmm. they, that just wanted to start to get some of the techniques that they can start to put into part threes now, but looking to the future. But it's not a part three course, but it, it can help a little bit, I think. Um, and thank you, Kevin, that's really nice. So Kevin's just saying that he did a, um, the, a workshop in January and a little testimony there. Thanks, um, Kev, there, saying that it's given you that bit of confidence to kind of coach the standards check and uh, for the new part three. So um, thanks for that. And as I said, we'll put the links there so if anyone else wants to uh, look at popping along to, mm. to one, then you're more than welcome. And what you always get from us is you do, you know you pay for the course. If you don't just get the course, you, you do get us at the end of a phone or the end of an email and these types of things as well. So we, we do try and support people. So there we go. Thank you very much. And we'll speak to you next week about, do you remember what the subject is? I can't, but I will put a post up after this one with the list okay. coming up so people can see. Okay. okay. But it's either scrolling or my mapping, and then the other week is the, the one that's not the one that's oh, next week. Okay. Right. <laughs> It'll be me then. Yeah, it's you then, yeah. I'm going to pub with a nine year old. <laughs> Um, okay, in the night, everybody, and uh, uh, perhaps see some of you at a workshop this weekend. I am in um, Cardiff on Friday and Saturday doing a standards check workshop and the uh, standards check trainer on the, on the Saturday. So maybe yeah. some of you watching will be there. So. Have fun. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.